and welcome to WTO Forum. The bulk of economic activity these days, job creation, new technologies, economic dynamism, is coming from small and medium-sized enterprises around the world. Although we know that these young, bursting companies are in fact the engine of growth and innovation, they do not participate to the extent that they should or could in the global trading system, and the question is, why and what can be done to ameliorate this situation? Well, we're very lucky to have with us today two women who are experts on this, who know it firsthand. We have Carol Kariuki. She's the Chief Executive Officer of the Kenya Private Sector Alliance. Uh, that's in Nairobi, Kenya. And we have Kathy Suimanen, the founder and CEO of Trade Up Capital Fund in the United States, as well as the trade research firm Next Trade Group LLC. Ladies, welcome. Thank you. Carol, let's start with you. What do you see as the obstacles to the participation of small and medium sized enterprises, and what can be done to improve the situation? Yeah. Thank you very much. I think one of the things that uh, really affects the small and medium sized companies is information. They just don't have access to information like the big companies. A lot of the big companies, because they do have enough staff. So they're able to employ people where they can, researchers, they can get stuff, communication and all that. Small companies don't, you know. So because of that, they don't get information as they should. They are not in the platforms where this information is shared because sometimes where these platforms uh, take place costs them, you know, and they do not have the money to travel to be where this, they can get this information. Then secondly, it's, thirdly, is research. Sometimes they don't have the capacity to research and, um, and get what they need to, to understand what, what's going on. So those are some of the things that affect them. And I think what can be done is um, to find ways to support them. And there are two ways. I mean, for WTO, you, you, we could have that as an initiative for small enterprises and say so when these meetings are happening, we're going to select several ones of them that can participate and sometimes, because a lot of them are in associations, you could even have the associations participate on their behalf and then be able to distribute the information and disseminate the information. Secondly is um, the technical assistance they need, you know, and um, being able to go out there to find them, organize them, give them the technical assistance they need so that they know how to participate. Thirdly is um, the, the governments themselves. You know, the governments also need to find ways to share information, but also to facilitate trade for them. Like um, issues of customs, you know, they need, they need efficiency, they need um, easy ways to be able to trade and go through customs and cross-border trade. So having um, a lot of things automated so that they don't have to move from one office to another and um, also, or also have like single window in, in customs. Those are some of the things that can really help the small businesses. So Kati, these companies, these entrepreneurs, they have the ideas, they have the goods, they have the services, but maybe the processes and the markets themselves, those are more elusive. Yeah, absolutely. It's, I would echo what Carol was saying about the, the lack of information. And oftentimes, when it comes to SMEs, the issues are very nuts and bolts. How do I find customers? How do I finance my international mm -hmm. transactions? How do I deal with regulations? Uh, for big business, the issues typically are more and more for bigger taxation, uh, mm -hmm. regional trade agreements and such. So for small businesses, we really have to think about the nuts and bolts of every day of doing business. And I would highlight perhaps two major areas one is uh, access to finance, which is a critical uh, issue. And now, of course, what we're seeing in research is that uh, small businesses and, and the global trading community overall have a trade finance gap of $1.4 trillion. It's a significant kind of pent up uh, need for capital out there. And um, uh, this is ameliorated or exacerbated rather by the fact that banks are now perhaps pulling back from the SME market. They have higher capital requirements, higher know your customer requirements. But at the same time, we have an avalanche of new alternative finance players that can unlock this capital uh, for small businesses. So getting the export credit agencies and the alternative financing vehicles, such as fintech platforms, to work, with, uh, to work together to help SMEs to participate in, in trade, get their... Um, uh, orders fulfilled and so forth. This can truly help um, companies around the world. And I would also highlight kind of growth capital. It's not only about the transactional trade finance, but it's also enabling companies to access 
equity and longer term debt mm -hmm. that enable them mm -hmm. to grow. And the other area that uh, Carol alluded to was uh, perhaps trade facilitation. Mm -hmm. And this is something where the WTO has made great inroads. Mm -hmm. And for small businesses to better apply the mm -hmm. trade facilitation agreement, perhaps through kind of reduced uh, barriers for local shipments at the borders. We can have perhaps a, a higher de minimis standards at the borders that enable these local shipments mm. to go through without onerous customs inspections and high costs for SMEs. This might help uh, also SMEs participate in trade. Mm. Carol, you, you touched mm. briefly on the importance of, of streamlining the processes of a single window. And of course, mm. the trade facilitation agreement, is, as Kati mm. says, is something that can reduce red tape, yeah. reduce trade costs, mm -hmm. we think by an average of uh, almost 15%, mm -hmm. and that this can lead to real trade expansion, yeah. particularly among these kinds of companies. Right. But yeah. what other things might the WTO do? Mm -hmm. uh, trade finance, we do oversee a, a, an important contract, a, a contact group there, but, mm -hmm. but that's not really our thing. What do you, after a day interacting with business leaders here and, mm -hmm. and WTO members, are there mm -hmm. other things that WTO can do that you can, can think of that might help these uh, smaller, smaller medium-sized entrepreneurs? The other thing that I think WTO could do, and I don't know how they can do this, a lot of business today is very technological based. Mm -hmm. And technology is expensive for small companies. And so this is something that um, needs to be thought through. I think by both uh, maybe governments and WTO and say, how do we help um, small businesses access technology and that that could start helping them um, be able to internationalize or access markets and all that but also I think I need to pick up the issue of markets because one of the biggest challenge for small businesses is access to markets mm -hmm. you know and again it boils down to information about markets but more so just the demands of what those markets need you know, and a lot of the small enterprises have lost, um, they have, they, they are not, they have not specialized good enough. So sometimes the standard issues and all that. So maybe this is where WTO can come in and start assisting them with technical assistance on standards, you know, to be able to, to yeah. meet the needs of the market mm -hmm. they are going for, but also to help open um, markets for them. Because big businesses will go out there and they'll look for markets and they'll, sell their goods and their services, but small business may not be able to do that. And so, again, I think WTO may think of ways to say, how do we target uh, markets for small and medium enterprises and help open that for them even and work alongside their governments yes. to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. Kati, your final thoughts? Yeah, to, um, to um, uh, echo that, perhaps to make this effort scalable, we can also leverage the information technologies out there, provide platforms for mm -hmm. small businesses that are accessible from around the world mm -hmm. uh, through the WTO to help them uh, mm -hmm. see the new market opportunities mm -hmm. and so forth. And then I would also highlight the opportunities that are offered by e-commerce, uh, talking mm -hmm. about technology mm -hmm. and e-commerce. When you look at companies uh, mm -hmm. selling on e-commerce platforms versus companies that are not, uh, those companies that are selling on e-commerce platforms practically practically mm. all of them engage in trade, mm. whereas the offline uh, companies, uh, barely any of them engage in trade. So e-commerce is a magnificent enabler of trade. Now, how do we facilitate SMEs access to it? It's not only about getting them connected online. It's mm. also about training them, mm. uh, having them uh, the e-skills yeah. uh, related to this, mm. um, dealing with uh, payments issues, harmonizing payment systems across International uh, rules. Absolutely. Absolutely. Rules. Uh, logistics as well. Again, trade facilitation agreement plays into this. It's a very holistic area, but it's a huge catalyst of mm -hmm. SME trade. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, it enables also buyers from around the world to find SMEs, for uh, them to become accidental exporters, if you will, and, and learn to export <laughs> that way. Yeah. And um, uh, I think kind of working both on the financing side with alternative finance platforms as well as with e-commerce side with e-commerce platforms and private sector players as well as other stakeholders of course multilateral development banks and others this can really make a big difference uh, shift the needle for SME trade. Let me just say one last one uh, even simplify simplify the rules simplify taxation you know just give them simplified things they'll yeah. be able to abide by them because some of the like taxation is very complex 
within countries and between countries yeah. and they just need to simplify the process so that they can be part of that and that's why you find SMEs will get in and then some of them will even try like you'll find a lot of them in Africa will refuse to formalize because when they formalize then they have to pay taxes mm -hmm. and the, the tax process is too complex yeah. so they stay informal yeah. and some of them are quite big but yeah. they stay informal so that they don't have to deal with those issues. Carol Karayuki, Kathy Suimanen, thank you very much for joining us and thanks to you for watching WTO Forum.